Just where you're seated, we had Hawaiuki from uh, Kamagayuki Innovation Center and a, a very brilliant young boy, Charles Kai Kai. He amazed us with his, you know, he's very smart. But asking Hawa about um, what Sierra Leone would need to catch up to speed with the rest of the world in terms of innovation, she highlighted a lot of things. And one of the things that came out is uh, investment opportunities into these people with innovative skills and ideas. It's not enough to just get a space where you create maybe a prototype. That prototype should be able to be scaled up to address national issues. Beyond just getting them to come to the summit and you identifying their strengths and what they can do, what more is the ministry intending to do with these innovators, especially those who have solutions to some of the pressing issues in the country? Um, thank you, and, and I absolutely agree with Hawaiuki. I think, um, and actually she's participating in the summit, by the way. And I agree with her that the critical issue right now when we think about innovation in Sierra Leone is that access to finance that allows them to scale. What we've seen in the private sector, again, I'll give them kudos. They've done an amazing job in supporting the building up of prototypes or MVP products, as we we'll call them. There's, and that's the first stage, right? But I think where we've lacked is that that focus area on, okay, after I've developed a prototype, that's significant <coughs> investment that you're going to need to really scale up to a global level. And I've spoken to, and, and, and I think the other thing to understand within that is I think there's usually a perception that government or, or, or maybe development partners, but actually when you think about the world of innovation, that's not how it goes. What we need to be able to do is to invest in these ideas to the point that when you get them investment ready for the bigger investments, what we see happen across the globe, across the region, they're venture capital funds. They're angel investors. These are funds or sets of people who are looking to invest in innovation. But what we need to be able to get our people to do, our innovators to do, is to invest in them to the point where, where they can become competitive for some of those um, um, funds. Because I speak to them, for example, UNICEF Innovation Fund, and a couple of others, they're like, oh, I haven't really received an application. And one of them said I have. But when it came, it wasn't at that point where I could invest in it. So if you ask me, that's where for the government priority right now is looking across these different incubator programs. How do we select some which we think can really be skilled, invest in them to get them to that point where you could say, for example, a bankable project. That's where you want to be able to get them to when you take it in front of these big investors that can invest $2 million, $3 million. Those are the significant investment that you need that they will become competitive. So that's why one of the key features of this summit is going to be a conversation on access to finance.